Onyx Pharmaceuticals is researching and developing promising treatments for some diseases that have uh, unmet needs. And this does include monkeypox, which has been getting a lot of attention lately. And with me is the CEO, Seth Letterman of Tonix Pharmaceuticals. And welcome, Seth. And um, the WHO just recently declared this a, a global emergency, the monkeypox. And you are working on developing a vaccine for this. So tell me, where does that stand? First, thanks for having me on, Jane. It's great to see you again. Monkeypox is a big problem. There are over 17,000 cases outside of Africa, and this has all just started since May. Roughly, monkeypox looks like it's doubling each week outside of Africa. So it is a very big problem, and we're glad that the Secretary General of the WHO declared it a public health emergency of, of international mm -hmm. significance. And, and your company is working on a vaccine, so where in the approval of that vaccine does that stand? Right, we've been working on a monkeypox vaccine for 10 years, oh. <laughs> so we were uh, prepared for this. Mm -hmm. we, we think that monkeypox has been overlooked in Africa. Basically what happened is when everyone was being vaccinated for smallpox, monkeypox was kept out of the human population because smallpox and monkeypox are very similar. Interesting. So if you're vaccinated against smallpox, you're protected against monkeypox. Mm -hmm. When we stopped vaccinating people after the eradication of smallpox, an unforeseen consequence was that monkeypox would re-enter the population. Mm -hmm. So it's been a problem in Africa for several years that's been overlooked, but now it's spreading outside of Africa and growing very quickly. Interesting. Right now, it seems to be concentrated in MSM, men who have sex with men, mm -hmm. and it's a f astonishing concentration given that it's infectious and it's not a sexually transmitted disease. Mm -hmm. So we, and many experts believe that unfortunately it will very likely get into the general population relatively soon. Yeah, um, and of course we've talked about COVID vaccines in the past as well and the White House recently launched an effort to uh, make these vaccines more durable. I mean, we've seen so many people have been vaccinated and even boosted getting COVID. So, uh, I mean, you have been working on this vaccine for I think is ever since we first heard about COVID. Where does that stand stand with you? Well, we're obviously disappointed that the vaccines are not performing better. We, like everyone else, hope that they would perform better. But we also never stopped our work because right from the beginning, in conversations with you, yeah. we've warned that the vaccines did not have durable protection and they didn't block forward transmission. So we've been busily working on our vaccine and we're delighted that the White House is now recognizing that we need probably something like another Operation Warp Speed mm -hmm. to come up with new ideas and new technologies. Because for example, the President Biden's senior advisor in this said, we really need a breakthrough at this point. And by breakthrough, what he was referring to is we need new vaccine technologies that are fundamentally different and Tonix has been working on a live virus vaccine that we believe provides more durable protection and has the potential to block forward transmission. Yeah, and it seems like the COVID vaccines were successful in terms of, I think, of keeping people out of the hospital, or at least reducing those numbers, which was not insignificant, but um, something to really prevent the spread, I think, it would certainly be helpful. But not insignificant, but also, unfortunately, the hospitalizations and deaths are rising mm. with the new BA5 strain. So even that amount of protection seems to be wearing out. But the, the COVID problem is affecting all aspects of our society. It's contributing to the supply chain disruptions. Yeah. It's contributing to the delays at the airports. And generally, it, a major drag on our economy. Sure. So we really have to get moving and get better vaccines discovered, developed, yeah. and deployed to get the economy really back yeah. up and, and to save lives. It's been an unbelievable thing <laughs> to live through. Okay, so you recently had a ribbon cutting ceremony uh, for your Advanced Development Center. So uh, this is in Massachusetts, correct? So explain what kind of work you'll be doing there. The, this facility is purpose-built to, to manufacture clinical trial supplies 
of our live virus vaccines mm -hmm. for monkeypox and for COVID. So it was a very complex facility and we built it during the pandemic with all of the supply chain interruptions mm -hmm. and we completed it in just about a year. We had a very exciting ribbon cutting ceremony in June and we're up and running and this will really facilitate our work. In addition to the vaccines that we're working on, monkeypox and COVID, we're gearing up to be responsive to President Biden's AP3, which stands for American Pandemic Preparedness Plan, so that we believe we'll be able to make live virus vaccines to new pathogens within 100 days oh, wow. of identifying the sequence. Wow. That's amazing. That would be great because it does feel like more of these things are popping up for whatever reason. So to have kind of some of that work already in the pipeline would could be huge. So thank you so much, Seth, for coming back. Always interesting. Thank you for yes. having uh -huh. me on, Jane.